If you've been scrolling on LinkedIn and Twitter like I have been, you may have heard about this new thing called attack surface management. I'm not saying new as in it's a new thing, but it's become a new topic and a hot topic infosec, especially when it comes down to data gathering. So if you have seen this, you may have heard of companies like Microsoft getting in business with Risk IQ. You may have seen a company like FireEye or Mandiant uh, acquiring Intrigue and so on. Hell, it's also getting to a crazy point that these bug bounty platforms like Bug Crowd and HackerOne are also getting into the ASM or the attack surface management. Or as HackerOne wants to call this, attack resistant management, I think is what they call it. So what is ASM? We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But I also wanna kick off a new series on talking about external attack surface management, both from a perspective of a bug bounty hunter, but also how you can also implement these different methods as a company to maybe get a list of all your domains and assets that you may have in your inventory. So hi, I'm the Homsec, and today I want to talk about attack surface management. And I would like to thank IPInfo.io for sponsoring this video. Well, what is IPInfo? It's all in the name. IPInfo provides accurate, up-to-date IP address information, including geolocation data, VPN detection, abuse contacts, and other data types in a fast, clean API. They've been doing this for eight years and they have handled over 40 billion API requests every month. They also provide a bunch of free features and tools that can be super handy for getting data quickly. One of the most common use cases for me is to just check for my own IP address by running curl IP info or to check the details of another IP address that I'm investigating by going to curl and looking for IP info slash the IP address. If you want to play with the data yourself, I'd recommend grabbing the IP info Golang client from github.com slash IP info slash CLI and running some commands. So what is attack service management? Well, attack service management is just a fancy term for saying that you know exactly every single piece of a digital asset that you own that could be exposed on the internet. And the definition of an asset really depends on what you do online, but it could be anything like a website, it could be a DNS record, it could be your mobile apps, your, your phone apps, whatever applications you have hosted online. It could also go as far as being a, a smart device, a camera, whatever it is. Think of this as a asset or something that could expose you online to a way that a hacker or an, uh, a user with malicious intent could abuse it to get into your network or get into your infrastructure and laterally move up and eventually breach and get some sort of data out of your company or organization. But for the sake of this video, because it makes it easier for me to give examples and talk about it a little bit more, we're going to strictly talk about external attack surface management. So we're going to look at websites, things that may be exposed. This could also be including like IP addresses again, like I said, like a, a DNS record, a marketing site, or whatever it could be that's online on a web server that could be hosting some sort of a website. So what does attack surface management really look like? Let's imagine a huge company like Apple or PayPal and think of every single company they have acquired over the years. So for example, Apple owns Beats by Dre, they have iCloud, they have all these different products and all these different companies underneath them. Now think about every single product that that company owns. So in case of Apple again, let's think about the iPhone, let's think about the iPad, let's think about every single bit of product they use and every single thing that's on the back end that supports those. So if it's a website, a marketing website, a shopping site, an API, a user interface, all of those add up and they become a large number of assets that belongs to this company. I'll give you a quick visual. I ran a query on paypal.com and this query was just using a free source, no DNS brute forcing, there was no uh, paid tools, nothing, nothing fancy, just purely looking at SSL data that's open source online, like a company like cert.sh, and I was able to find 413 domains that belong to PayPal itself. So that's Venmo.com, PayPal, PayPal Objects, PayPal Corp, anything that belongs to PayPal. Just by quickly running that query, it gives me 413 unique domains. Now imagine that we run the same exact thing, and instead of looking for those domains, we look for every single subdomain that's belonging under each domain. So for example, it could be app.paypal.com, it could be mail.paypal.com, and it could be anything else, internal.corp.paypal.com. All of those add up. And if each of those domains even have 10 to 100 subdomains, that's a large number of assets that we can see externally from an attacker, a bug bounty hunter, or even a malicious attacker 
who wants to get into the network. Now, could you imagine how hard it is to keep track of these? And like I said, these are all domains and subdomains that I have found using an open source tool. These are not the IP addresses. These are not things that are not web servers. Purely web servers that I found is this many IP addresses and domains. We're not looking at anything else, but I want you to think about a company's perspective of how hard it is to keep a track and inventory of every single bit of these domains and assets that they own. So why is all this so important? Why is it important for you to know the answer to all these questions that I'm throwing at you? Well, the simple answer is, again, it goes back to knowing your external attack surface, but also you want to know where are you exposed the most? Where are you able to be exploited from an external point of view? And that means how is an adversary going to be able to get to your infrastructure by knowing these things about your company? So let me give you another example. And I think doing this is gonna make more sense why ASM is so important. Imagine another big logo of Wolverine that comes out. This could be the Log4Js, Strat2, something on Apache Tomcat, you name it. It could even be an unauth RCE on WordPress, for example. It's going to be very hard especially for companies that don't have a good security posture or a security process built in to be able to identify every single instance of these different applications. I mean, even look at Log4J, you can still see in bug bounty platforms like HackerOne and BugCrowd, the companies are still being exploited to this day. And that's not to say, or it's not a job at these companies to say they're not good at doing these things. It just means that we are just growing as an industry. Everything on the internet's growing and growing and more things are going online. And it's just becoming harder to keep track of all these things. So when a vulnerability drops, you want to be able to, as an organization, get in front of it and be able to patch these things before an adversary could get in and exploit it and breach your infrastructure or dump data from your infrastructure. And I personally think that's why ASM is such a big deal right now and why it has such a huge interest from corporates and giant corporations that are trying to get into this industry and business. But I didn't do all of this just to dive into ASM and talk about why ASM is so great and so important. I did all this so I can launch a new series to talk about different techniques where you can use different tools, different methods, or different data sources to get a list of different programs or different uh, domains, subdomains, and assets that belong to a company. So do me a favor, before we end this video, drop me a comment down below. Let me know what techniques you're interested in. I think the next video I make is going to be around a certificate transparency. Where I'm gonna talk about how you can use those, what are the different platforms you can use, and how you can gather data and build upon it. So drop me a comment, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about ASM. Do you think it's important um, and what techniques you want me to talk about next? But until the next video, I'm out, peace.